Is it falling, Hector? Mm-hmm. It's the one I had last time. It was a total bummer. Welcome to episode three of The, the Street, Street Sage. Sage. My name is Stacy, and this is my chat show. I started this chat show as a way to reach out to people and to give people a voice. If you go to the website, www.thestreetsage.com, you can have the opportunity to be a part of this show as well. Here on The Street Sage, there's a few ways you can be a part of the show. We have an advice column, and you can go to the website to submit a question under the Ask Sage portion. It's on the left-hand side of the website. If you send a question, it could be answered on the website or it could be answered here on the show. If you want some advice or someone to tell something to, feel free to submit that as well. It comes to me in the form of an email. If there's something that you don't want to be published, please make note of that. Uh, on the website, there is also a speak out section. Again, the website is www.thestreetsage.com. And in this section, you can submit thoughts on the show or things that you think that we should talk about, topics that really, you know, get your goat. Or if you want to be on the show, you can let me know there as well. Like I said, I want to give you a voice, and I've created something that gives regular schmo a place to speak their mind. I am a big fan of little to no filters, so don't let that deter you from being on the show if that's something you're interested in. Um, I'm a big fan of people speaking their minds. This is what I'm about, and I would love for you to join me on this adventure of figuring out what the show could be, not only for us here hosting the show, um, but also for the listeners. And I know that I couldn't do this on my own, so I'm here today with Hector. Hector, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yes, my name is Hector, also known as the Big Gay Mexican. I came here to Minneapolis from El Paso, Texas, where I've been told um, that we're murderers. Um, Correct. <laughs> you, did you see the documentary? Uh, I, yes, I did see the documentary, <laughs> um, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, for mm -hmm. all of you who have not listened to episode two yet, even though <laughs> you should. <laughs> anyway... I am not a murderer. Um, thank you for thank you for clarifying that. Yes, 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 yes. Well, actually, I am a murderer of ugly fashion. Boom. Yes. Mind blown. Yes, I'm talking to you. You know who you are. It's anyway. me. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Don't worry, it's me too. <laughs> mm. Yep. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, but no, um, I'm here to lend my voice, um, give my advice. Um, I'm not, I mean, I'm not the best advice giver, or I mean, maybe I am and just don't know it, but I'm here just to say what I have to say. Excellent. That's exactly what we want people to do on this show is to say what you got to say about stuff. Right. Right? Yep. Because a lot of people have a voice and opinion about things that are happening and know where to talk about it. So that's what we're hoping to do here on our show. So thank you, Hector, for telling us a little bit about yourself. And our other host we have here with us is Earl. Hello, everyone. My name is Matt Early. Everyone calls me Earl. Has been that way for years. Uh, I'm on the show uh, as the voice of the just regular dude. Uh, just, just to get my Joe Schmo opinion about things and stuff. Things and stuff. Things and stuff. Whatever we want to talk about, I will talk about it, because I am chatty. Earl is also known as the show's resident token master. I am the, the token to master. Dun, dun, dun. The I... token master. Dun, dun, dun. The I... token master. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Okay, I'm done. Okay, cool. Um, <laughs> yes, folks, I am the token master. Every every episode, we will be. I will have Stacy and Hector pick out of this token bucket that I have, and whatever tokens they pick will be what that episode is 
brought to you by. So we're going to get to it right here. I've got the red token bucket. I'm mixing up the tokens right now. I'm ready. Ooh, we my will word's have be better last than week word. or last time uh, Stacy picked first. So this time Hector will pick first. And yes. and here he goes. He's I'm picking picking, a token. I'm picking, I'm picking, I'm picking, and now Stacy will pick one. a token. And this week's episode of The Street Sage is brought to you by Mark from Ark. And fake poop. <laughs> Excellent. Two excellent sponsors. Great. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Wait, we need a moment, though. Mark for Mark. Ah, uh, yes. Robin Williams, yep. rest in peace. Rest in peace, Robin Williams. Very None of you see this, but I am touching my chest, and yep. I'm putting my hands in the air. As Give him a little kiss. Give him a little mm-hmm. kiss. Deuces. Rest in peace, Robin Williams. Very good man. I do not have a good segue into the next topic, which is discussing why we are calling our show a chat show. Chat show. Chat 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 show. show. Well, it's obvious because we don't really talk. We chat. We chat. And we're unique. It's relaxed. We're here in my living room recording this, so it's pretty relaxed. It's just a chatty atmosphere. It's not, uh, you know, it's not a full-on talk show and it's different than calling it a talk show which makes right. it better chat show plus it's, a chat it's really show. fun to say chat and, show and if you're listening to this please take a moment we'll pause for you to say out loud several times chat show ready go chat Great. show chat show chat show, right. chat show. Chat show. Yep. hilarious yeah. and it's just fun to say right it brings a smile to your right? face and <clears throat> to kick off the show i thought it would be fun to say our Highs and lows of the week. Mm. So we'll go around and say something really positive that happened to you this week and maybe something negative that happened to you this week. Who would like to start? I guess I'll go. So, I mean, my low of the week was this horrible ear infection that I had. Uh, I didn't go to work on Thursday because I was in bed, dizzy and nauseated because the doctor gave me antibiotics, but... They also weakened my body to the point where I couldn't even get up, so that was a bummer. But I guess the high point of the week is it also went away, kind of, sort of. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I'm okay, folks. Yep. Great to hear it. Yep. Well, my uh, my low point of the week, uh, earlier last week, my car uh, had some serious troubles that was not getting coolant and overheating. On my 10-minute drive to work, I had to stop twice in order to let the car cool down. Uh, But I have since got it fixed, and it's running like a dream. My car has heat again, so that might even be the high point. Classy. Yeah, yeah. Living the dream. Actually, the high point of this week for me uh, is I have had a cracked toilet seat for quite some time, and I bought a replacement and fixed it. Ooh, so, so no pinching of the butt. No pinching of the butt. No pinching of the butt, yes! Yes! Everybody's happy. Big kid stuff. Yeah. For real, right yep. here. So, Stacy, how about yourself? I would have to say my low of the week was finding out that this grant I've been working on, um, it was supposed to be due in March, but there were so many applicants that they shut it down early they have taken it off the market so that sucks but um well what lesson did we learn from that though well i've already got some stuff written so i already have a good basis for the next grant if you're applying for a grant apply right away don't wait don't wait well but i didn't wait that long That's they, true. I mean, March is far away. But, really, yeah, but, that was supposed to be open until March, and my goal was to get it turned in at the beginning of December, and so that's a bummer. But um, in lieu of that, I would say a high is that I've set up myself for next this next coming year um, with some new opportunities and freeing up my schedule a little bit to do some things that I want to do that I haven't had time to do. So that's exciting, and I'm looking forward to that. The important part about doing highs and lows of the week or recognizing, you could even do it every day, is doing a higher low of the day, because it's important to recognize that even though things are bad or might you might be in a crappy place, but things, there's always something good going on. And so it's important that we never forget that there's good with the bad. That's true. I need to change my high point of the week. Okay, what is it? Oh, yeah, please do. 
on Wednesday, really hot guy said hi to me. High point. Yay! Yep. It's a little things in life, friend. It, yep, really. Yep. 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 Got to take every win you can get. Right, exactly. It was mm-hmm. awesome. Mm-hmm. Congratulations. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, you do look beautiful. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, are you guys ready for to get into the Q&A of let's, the week? Let's do it. Yep, let's let's Q&A it up. It. All right, here we go for question one. Dear Street Sage, at work I feel as if no one likes me. I don't understand. I'm friendly and I make jokes. My coworkers are nice to my face, but I can tell they don't really like me. I just think that everyone is stuck up. What do you suggest for me to do to find a way to get into the in crowd? Charlie. Charlie, first of all, this is not high school. Right? Yeah. The in crowd. What the f- This what? is your this <laughs> is your place of employment here. Um, and all I know about you is what you told me in three sentences. And my suggestion is that maybe you need to take a look at your own actions. Right. Or also your work situation. Where do you work? And Where what, there's an in crowd. Well, one of my jobs there is totally, that's a thing. I guess. <laughs> I mean, I guess I did work at a call center where you're right. There is, in a work environment such as a call center, there is an in crowd. It's kind of funny. It's like the people who hang out together yeah. or who get along better than the other people. Well, the weird thing about like the call centers, I'm going to get into call centers real quick because I worked at five of them, and they're all the same, too. But it's kind of like a giant high school um, because you have your supervisors, which are your like, teachers, and then you have your um, quality assurance people. They test your phone capability, so they're kind of like, vice principals and then you have like the vice president of the company and he's like the principal it's oh it's so messed up and people that work at call centers they tend to not really have other social lives so they hang out with everybody at work and then it leads to drama and i mean it's fun to watch don't get me wrong it was good, you know, to know everybody's gossip because, you know, you just sit there and you're just like, oh, he boinked her, she boinked him, she's married to that guy, and that guy doesn't know that he boinked, like, you know, oh my God, it was great. Mm-hmm. High, uh, school. high school. High yeah. school, yeah. Well, yeah. it was better than high school because alcohol was involved. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I mean, work is work. I, I tend to, I, I'm friends with, with people at work for sure, and yes, we do hang out sometimes, but... But mostly, I guess I have a slightly different job too than most normal jobs. But and you know, some of my coworkers I spend an inordinate inordinate amount of time with, just based on the nature of the work. Well, and I think that that is important too. I mean, in the theater community, generally the people you're working with are your friends. Sometimes right, your best friends, yeah. people you've been working with for years and years. Some you even went to college with, and then you stay together in professional settings. Um, so I, I think maybe it's not this quite the same for the theater and arts community. No, it's yeah. really different. I mean, Hector probably has the most uh, regular job out of the three of us. It's true, but as it's far also as like going to an office. Goes, well, yeah. So know? I go into an office every day, but I also go into a theater every day. So I mean, the people I work with, they're all involved in the arts. So it's kind of it's kind of different. I would say maybe my youth counselor job is the most real. Well, that's a person job. It's like a real true. person right. job. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. I mean, Hector has a real person job. I know, but it's still in theater. Right. <laughs> well. <laughs> but I don't think Charlie mm-hmm. is a theater person. So, like, he's asking for advice. So, so if right. you really want to be part of the in crowd, then my suggestion is to do it in the, the sneaky way. So basically, you have to always be around them, like you know, in the break room if they're there, but not around them in in an annoying fashion. No, no, no. You don't want to be creepy. Yeah. Well, no, no, I'm not saying to be creepy, but I mean, you can make yourself known without actually making yourself known. Like, for example, if you're if you're in the break room with them, you see them. Um, If there's like a seat somewhere near them, just you know. I don't know, like, sit next to them, pull out a magazine, um, try to make conversation with these people. Um, Which is, it's a really good point what you're you're saying, but I'm almost wondering if this Charlie character that we don't know anything about besides these three sentences, maybe he 
has already done something that has put people off. Could mm, be. That is true. What did you do, Charlie? That's like, you're <laughs> right. That is the question, Charlie. What did you do? You know? <laughs> I mean, because if you if this is the vibe you're getting from all of your coworkers, all everybody, you're just you have this feeling that they don't really like you or they're nice to your face, but not okay. Well, you say that you tell jokes. Are you telling appropriate jokes? Um, are you are you are you maybe giving a bad vibe to the opposite sex? Are you inappropriate that way? I mean, didn't he say that, I mean, <clears throat> they get along and people... He said, my coworkers are nice to my face, but I can tell they don't really like me. Mm. I mean, you could also try something like, you, you know, you're at work one day and it's about quitting time and say, hey, you know, I'm going to head down to to the happy hour down the street who wants to come along yeah. and that's a right. good way to actually get to know someone because at work you know you, you're you're putting on your professional uh you know your professional self putting that out there but you know after work you kind of let your hair down a little bit and you can can actually just chat with each other and really get to know someone and you said that you thought your coworkers were all stuck up but one thing to also take a look at is how they treat each other if you're wondering if it's just you, I mean, do you, when other, when they're not all together, are they talking about each other behind each other's back? Because then maybe it really isn't you. Maybe that's just how everybody is treating people, and then you don't want to be friends with them anyway. Oh my God, I know. Yeah, but you don't. You do want to be. You want to. You want to get along with at least with the people that you work with. Of course, but it shouldn't ruin your day if you're not best friends. No, no, that is true. But. Some you know I don't know if he's using work to get to get friends I don't know how many friends Charlie has but uh, you know maybe it's just his way of trying to make friends you know well the other thing is he also says that his his other um, employee mates <laughs> coworkers <laughs> coworkers employee mates I prefer Emplo- employee mates employee mates, <laughs> employee mates. <laughs> he called them stuck up so at the same time. It's kind of like, well, Charlie, do you really want to be friends with these people? They're all stuck up. Uh, what does that say about you? Right. Don't get me wrong. Again, like, I judge people all the time. Like, it's in my nature. I'm sorry. It's human nature. We judge. It's but, not all bad judgment. Right, exactly. It's actually most of it is not bad judgment. Well, when it comes to clothes, I'm super judgmental. However, you know, it's it's kind of like, well, you're calling them stuck up, but yet you want advice on how to be friends with them. So, you know, Charlie, you need to think about it. What exactly do you want? I mean, it obviously bothers you enough that you wrote in asking about it. But I would say a couple things. Maybe check yourself. Check how they're treating one another. See if this is really what you want. There is a difference between being friends and being friendly. Being friends and being friendly. Yep. And there is a difference between friends and work friends very as true. well although sometimes that line is pretty blurry and there's it really can be. no line sometimes <laughs> because i'm definitely friends with people i work with but yeah yeah but maybe just take a look at the situation a little bit charlie and that's just my opinion question two 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 pregunta dos Dear Street Sage, I don't mean to toot my own horn, but I am a good worker. I'm on time, I work hard, I encourage my coworkers, but I have had no promotions. How do I make my employers see me in a different light? I need to move up or out. Tired worker. Hmm. I, I'm not probably the one to answer this question, is I'm kind of in a <laughs> my job is really a non promotional type job. Well, tired worker, I have a few questions that I would want to shoot back at you. If we were having a real conversation, I would say, one, have you told your employers that you want to move up in your company? That's one thing you should think about. Do you have all the necessary qualifications to move up? Whatever that might mean for your job. Do you have the right degree? Do you have the right number of experiences? You know, years of experience, you know, that sort of thing. Um, Is there an open position? And if there is, is it a job that you apply for or do you get picked for it? Because if you apply for it, then you should apply for it because that would be a good way to get your foot in the door. And if it's a job you get picked for, then that's where it comes in that it's important that you tell them that it's something you're interested in. Because if they don't know that you want to move up, then... They probably won't pick you to move up. Exactly. But also, you know, even if you don't tell them you want to move up, 
if you do exemplary work, uh, you know, maybe they will notice, you know, you, you got to really step up your game, maybe. I don't know. Mm. S- but it sounds like you're a pretty good worker. But maybe you got to maybe got to crank it up that extra step. Bring it to 11, as they say. Right. And if you do already work at that level and they still haven't noticed, then I think you might want to find another job. Granted, that is easier said than done because finding a job is a beep. But ditto on the beep. Right, exactly. Total beep. (laughs) But, you know, sometimes you got to do what you got to do. If you're not happy, you're the only one that can change it. So I just be looking for another job if your job, if your current job doesn't appreciate you the way you feel, you should be appreciated. And granted, yes, it's not going to be easy, but, you know, do your mm-hmm. best to hang in there and just keep looking in your spare time. Just keep looking for a new job. And yeah, are, are people, I mean, are other people moving up? Is that, are they at a point, is your company at a point where, you know, they're even looking for people to for for higher up positions or or are you not moving up because they don't need anyone to fill those positions you know that's also a thing so all things to think about all things to think about but i would i would answer those questions about you know are you being open about what you want um do you have the necessary qualifications etc etc but that's just my opinion you know, this does segue quite perfectly into, um, you know, equal rights in the workforce. Mm. Yeah, it's a pretty hardcore subject. I'm totally against them. <laughs> you would be. Go white men. Oh. Just kidding. Just kidding, everyone. Uh, American. Oh, <laughs> Americans. <laughs> Americans. Americans. I'm I mean, kidding. The, I'm American. Okay, <laughs> so I don't have a book of facts sitting here with a bunch of numbers to spill out to everybody who's listening here um but women definitely get paid less than men that's a true fact Mm -hmm. that is a true fact i don't have to have numbers here to spout off to it's a true fact i mean i would imagine that it is getting better than you know even 10 years ago but well that's uh, seems like it might be digressing yeah it's kind of it's kind of like a slippery slope with that subject because in a way opportunities are better for women nowadays than 10 years ago. Mm-hmm. However, we're not, we're not there yet though. Equality is not there. No. And that's one thing that we do have to keep remembering is that yes, things are better, but it's not good enough. That is know. true. That is very true. Yeah. But having said that though, I feel like we, Like, we kind of have to stop fighting. I'm not saying completely stop fighting, but we kind of have to, you know, accept, or not accept, but appreciate the fact that things have changed and things are better. Yeah, things are better, but, and they're not great, but you're right. Yeah, we have to keep, keep trying to change things. Right. And the only reason that I bring the whole fighting thing up is because, um... I'm just going through my Facebook feed because I'm obsessed with Facebook as so is the rest of America. But I always see all those posts, you know, about inequality for women and, you know, women get paid less. And I understand that. Um, But I feel that the way people approach the subject is so negative that we forget to um, remember the good things about what's happening. And I would agree with a lot of... Um, controversial issues that go on in general people forget the good right yeah Mm -hmm. but it is it's tough too. like in the workforce now um, you have to specifically ask for like certain medical clauses to be added into your insurance if you're a female oh right yeah which is which is bs total bs like you have to predict if you might possibly want like an abortion, you have to preemptively put that into your insurance clause. But <laughs> I mean, uh, well, honestly, though, for that, um, aside from inequality, it's also BS insurance. You know, insurance is BS. That's true. Um, I just can't believe how many clauses there are nowadays. 
um, it's like, well, then why are we paying for insurance if I can't even use it? Or I'm still going to be paying a ton of money. Right, with your $5,000 deductible. Right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And as I would also say, you know, there there has been, and I've had friends tell me stories about they've been out or going out for a job and people have asked them in an interview if they planned to start a family. Who cares? It's none of your business. Well, it, it matters to the business because, oh, if you're – even especially if you're a woman, because it, oh yes, we'll give you this great job. Here you go. But are you going to start a family? Does that mean in in six months you're going to have a you know you're going to be uh, out on maternity leave for six weeks or whatever it is? And I mean I mean that is that is an issue. I I see, but but it shouldn't be. But it is is you know it's uh that's why they ask that question. That should not be allowed to be a question in an interview. It should not. I agree because <laughs> you you can't predict the future. No, it's like right now I'm not pregnant. Right now I don't, but I might. <laughs> you right. know, like shouldn't matter. It shouldn't. Do you think Hector, as a minority, that you have been treated differently in the workforce? Uh huh. Um. <laughs> yep. The only reason why I got one of my jobs. Was because I was a minority. Because and they hi- had to hire more ethnic they people. They had to hire more ethnicity because they only had Caucasians working for them. So um, they hired me as soon as they saw my name. Like, immediately I got hired. Um, so that was, I mean, it was, I needed the job, so good for me. Um, at the same time, though. Right, but if that's the mentality. Well, yeah, it's like I'm the token <laughs> Latino at that job. I mean, it's pretty funny, but <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's like I, I went to college and worked so hard so I could be the token Latino for some company. Mm. <laughs> Hooray. Hooray. <laughs> <laughs> Again, American. <laughs> <laughs> Putting minorities first. Putting minorities first. The face of America. <laughs> the ones that get paid much, much less than the ones well, that are not pictured. S- soon. I mean... And by soon, I mean probably within the next, like, 50 years or something. But I I think white people will be the minority. Yep. And you know who's going to be the majority? Mexicans. Mexicans. Yep. <laughs> We're taking over. <laughs> yes. I have heard that it's suggested to um, Americans to learn Spanish. This is not the reason why I have recently decided that I'm going to speak Spanish. But because she found an old Spanish notebook of hers. <laughs> Oh, my God, I know. And now she wants me to teach her Spanish, which is ridiculous. <laughs> okay, I didn't say necessarily teach me. I no, said no, no. Nope, speak- those are your exact words. No, those were words. exact words. Hector's going to teach Hector, me Spanish. Hector, you're going to teach me Spanish. <laughs> and I'm sitting there, what? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> and by teach me Spanish, I mean, you should really just talk to me in Spanish once I start learning it. <laughs> so then it helps me learn. Well, we'll see. <laughs> if I'm talking to you only in Spanish, you'll probably talk to me in Spanish back. <laughs> Well, here's the thing about that, though. You're not the only person that does that to me. I mean, people, not like my close friends, but just acquaintances out of nowhere, they'll be like, hola, Hector. And mm. I'm like, hey, what up? I usually say Pedro. Well, <laughs> well, well yeah. <laughs> hola, Pedro. I usually say, hey, hermano. Right. But that's from Arrested Development. Right. And you say <laughs> that to not just me, yeah, you know. Yeah, that's true. That's you true. know, other people are like, oh, Hector's here. Hola. <laughs> I'm like, oh. Hola, Hector. Where are the tacos? Right, exactly. (laughs) I'm very white. (laughs) And I'm over here like, oh, hello. (laughs) (laughs) But word on the street is, in fact, that Spanish is going to, you know, be the second language of America. I honestly feel it should be just because. Mexico is so close. No, 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 no. (laughs) It's, well, there's so many Mexicans who well, live here. Well, that and it's well, it's not just Mexicans. It's the Latino community, or the you know the Latino population in the United States is increasing. Yeah, so, yeah. I do feel um, Spanish should be you know an official language. However, having said that, though, and I'm okay to say this because I am Mexican. Um, years ago, like when I was in high school, I didn't really speak Spanish that well. 
um, because, you know, I'm kind of white on the inside, according to my mother. Twinkie. Twinkie. <laughs> Twinkie. Coconut, remember. Oh, not uh, Twinkie. Yes. Coconut. No. Coconut. Twinkie. Brown on the outside, white, white on the end. Coconut. Yep. Anyway, so I go to Dairy Queen with one of my teachers. I was at a speech and debate tournament, and none of the employees spoke English and my teacher was white and my Spanish wasn't very good. It took us 10 minutes to order because of the language barrier. And I mean, it's, I mean, no offense to anybody. Like I'm Mexican. I'm proud to be Mexican. But if you're going to be working in the United States, you're going to have to learn English. And I mean, and I'm pretty sure a little bit. of it, Right. And I'm pretty sure a ton of people are going to be really mad at me for making the statement. But I, I think if you're working in any country, you should, yeah, if you speak move that right. language. If you move to France, you would learn French, right? You, you know, French, yeah, yeah. you know, or at least, you know, that Dairy Queen should hire some people that speak English. So that way, when, you know, the person helping, you know, the customer, if they're having a hard time, then the other person can step in. But right at that, this Dairy Queen, like nobody spoke English, nobody. But it was okay because the area that we were in, nobody really spoke English anyway. So I mean, it was rare that they had you know non English speakers at this restaurant mm. at Dairy Queen. But it was kind of bothersome, especially because I went home and I complained to my parents, you know, and my parents, of course, were just really upset that I was making these comments and. You know, I'm going against my Mexican people, and I mean, I'm not. I'm just saying. Just telling it like it is. Yeah, I'm sorry. Like, we live in America. Americans speak English. You know, Americans in general should start learning more languages, because when you travel, most people who travel can speak two, three languages. Right. Well, see, that's the thing, though. When you go to other countries, they speak English because of all the tourists. They do. So why can't it be, you know, the other way around? Americans should be able to speak more than one language. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, granted, it's the education system's fault, but that's another story. Please do not get me started on the education system. I will have a whole episode dedicated to such uh, monstrosities. What's the word? Uh, Atrocities. Atrocities. Yes. Is that the word? Monstrosities work, too. Monstrosities? Yeah. No. Such atrocities. Well, I wish I had a Google right now. What do you need? I mean, what are you looking for? What word? That word. Monstros. Yeah. I mean. Monstrosity. I feel like that's the right word monstrosity I want Monstrosity is a word. It's, you know. Well, it is a word, but I don't think it's the right word. It's an adjective. To talk about such atrocities. Like, hmm. it's atrocious. I mean, I believe he's correct. However... <laughs> Damn right. I do like monstrosities well, better. Right. It makes it seem more angry. But also, <laughs> I am really good with words. <laughs> really good. Yeah. All the words. Mm-hmm. I mean, you created a chat show. Chat show. Chat show. <laughs> See, okay. we're all smiling. Actually, chat show. How, chat show. how that story, how chat show came about is pretty hilarious. Well, so speaking of um, the workplace... Uh, we can also bring up the subject of um, fat shaming, um, because that's that's actually another prejudice that happens in America. You know, who gets the job? The skinny person. Bartenders. Oh my God, bartenders! Wait, I would make an awesome bartender. Me too, but Have nobody will hire me. Be? Have you ever tried to be a bartender? Yes. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, but they well, won't hire me or give me a chance. I'm because, too fluffy. Yeah. It's fine. Or you also have no experience. I mean, that's also... A oh, well, but have this, you been to bars? <laughs> <laughs> but this was like back in the day when nobody had it, you know, when I was young enough where it, it didn't matter because they prefer you to not have experience. They can train you the way that, that they want you to be trained. Right. Mm. Okay. I'm just going to play devil's advocate here. and I think probably you didn't have enough experience. Some, I mean, most people like, you know, when they become bartenders, first they're like a hostess or a host at a restaurant, and then they become like a server, and then they become a bartender. You know, like I had serving experience. But were you applying to be a bartender or were you applying to be a server? A bartender. Well, see, maybe that's the problem. I know, but I again, this goes back to to Charlie or no to tired workers uh, question working your way up you know 
trying to trying to move up. But I also have very cute friends who don't have any bartending experience who get hired as bartenders. Yeah, same here. It happens all the time. It's a pretty people's profession, really. Working at a restaurant, bartending, hosting. Well, because people are generally feel more comfortable around pretty people. Right, exactly. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, the restaurant's more appealing because, you know, they're surrounded by beauty. More likely to spend money. Yeah. That's what it comes down to. True. Well, and, you know, let's be honest, pretty people get more tips because that's how America works. Americans. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Yeah. fat prejudice, that's a thing, for sure. Yeah. And there's this whole, you know, fat shaming thing going on all over, again, all over Facebook. I know, I hate to say it, but it's, that's what we're coming to, so might as well talk about it. (laughs) Um, But yeah, like, you know, people don't want people to be fat. I actually deleted somebody on Facebook, which is really funny, like this child, childhood friend of mine. Her status the other day was, I don't understand why fat people are comfortable being fat. Oh, I'm just talking out loud. Sorry, boggles my mind. Excuse me, beep. What the beep is wrong with you? (laughs) Like, seriously. No, I'm not comfortable being fluffy. However, I'm okay with it. I'm accepting who I am. Some people really can't control it. Right, exactly. Some people can and don't. Right. Yes, I'm going to be honest. Some people are just lazy and or they, you know, have no like ambition. You know, I I can't help myself every time I see somebody on a electric wheelchair, I I think are they lazy or do they need that? Oh my god. It's, it's the worst and I know every time I'm like, "Stacy, don't think that way because that's terrible." But I, I every was at every time. The grocery store the other day and <laughs> there was this woman, she she must have been uh probably in her late 30s, early 40s. At least that's what she looked like. And she was on one of those little motorized scooter things and she got it like stuck like in front of this aisle and she was trying to reverse it. And it wouldn't reverse, and it wouldn't couldn't go forward because the the wall was right there, and so she just like couldn't couldn't get it to go. And then I watched her just jump off the the thing and like basically pick it up and move it, <laughs> and then be on her way. And it was like, why are you in the motorized thing if you are able to do that? Right. That was I mean, weird. don't get me wrong. When I was a kid, I used to jump in those to oh, yeah, be silly because you know it's what right. children do. I used to work at a grocery store, <laughs> and we would race them. Okay, could you? Do you after we used hours. to. My friends used to work at a grocery store. We used to do that. We used to try to if you could, you got to go like around the lot and then into one of those um, places where you put your carts. Oh yeah. yeah. And if you got in one first, you were the winner. <laughs> oh my god! Really? Yeah. After yeah. hours. <laughs> Well, no, I don't have any grocery store stories. I apologize. <laughs> um, I mean, I don't know. She, that girl really upset me because it's how people really think, though. And that's actually the reason why I hate sweatpants. Because if you know me, you know how much I hate sweatpants. But the reason why I hate them so much is because it's always associated with bigger people. Bigger people wear sweatpants, and then all of a sudden... Because nothing else fits them. Right, nothing else fits them. So then automatically people assume that those people are lazy. Mm -hmm. And oh, just the whole idea of sweatpants just... It grosses me out. Fat people clothes are also more expensive. Oh, they're expensive and they're ugly. Um, the big and tall sections are horrendous for men. It's just polo shirts and jeans. I refuse to dress like that. I just, I can't do it. It's not in me. It's not fabulous. Well, that's just the, if you're fat and poor, then you have no choice but to wear ugly clothes because you can't afford the stuff that Right. it doesn't look like. Which may cause you to not get the job <laughs> because you don't look, you don't look good. Right. Right. However, though, I do have advice, though, for the fluffy people that are poor that can't find clothes. You can find clothes. You just have to really look really hard. You can go to thrift stores. You can go to secondhand stores. You can go to Marshalls or TJ Maxx or Ross. They actually have bigger clothes for fluffy people that are actually reasonably priced. 
I'm just saying. Man, Hector, if you had a blog about this, wouldn't that be great? <laughs> yeah, Stacy's been trying to get me to write this blog. Because you should. I know, I know, but I, I'm a horrible writer. Which is also not true. The only thing that makes you a horrible writer is that you don't write. Right. That's actually what I meant. I'm a horrible writer in the <laughs> sense that I don't write yeah. because I start writing and then I think of something else. And then, I don't know, maybe if I just do a bunch of Adderall. And <laughs> I mean, if you don't, if you don't no. write. Really focus you. Right. If you don't write, <laughs> you're a horrible writer. But then as soon as you write something, you're automatically a better writer than the millions of people who are not writing things. You're not wrong. See? You're not wrong. So you're already, even if you start writing, you're already way ahead of the curve. And when you write, you're actually a good writer. I've read it. I read your stuff. Yeah. Closing thoughts. Who wants to start with a closing thought for the day? I'll start. Uh, I just want to say to close out that the next time we record will be after Christmas. So whether you celebrate Christmas or whatever you might celebrate or not, Happy holidays to everyone. Oh, adorable. That's what I want to say. That's a really good closing thought. That is. And try to top that, Hector. You're up. Oh, my <laughs> closing thought. Let's see. Let's see. Okay. Well, my closing thought is this. If at first you don't succeed, suck it up, bitch. Drink some tequila and try it again. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> my closing thought for today is that I really want to shoot some archery. <laughs> Stacy loves archery. I am not very good at it yet, but she was I... inspired by Arrow, which is currently on television. Well, I mean, that... she was actually inspired by the movie Brave. Oh. Um, I actually was inspired to do it um, from a trip I took to Chicago. And I went to visit my friend Amanda, and we were like, what should we do today? Let's find something free to do in Chicago. And we happened to stumble upon this opening of this archery center. And so we took this really long walk through Chicago and ended up at this archery center and shot arrows for a little bit. And I was like, this is awesome. Why have I not been doing this? And then a year later, you saw the movie Brave and then fell in love. <laughs> and then Arrow came out, and you were super inspired. Yep. I think that's how it works. <laughs> and pretty much anybody who's badass shoots a bow and arrow. That's true. Robin Hood. Yeah. Legolos. Yeah. Loss. Legolos. <laughs> Who? Uh, Orlando Bloom from Lord of the Rings. The elf. Oh, He's an elf. Yeah. Yeah. And so um, people who shoot bow and arrow are awesome. And that is just my opinion. Thank you for joining us on episode three of The Street Sage. You can go to our website, www.thestreetsage.com, to check out our show notes. Thanks for listening. Yep, and uh, you can also, uh, we are, you can reach us uh, either via the website at www.thestreetsage.com, or you can follow us on Twitter. Uh, you can follow me at early, E-A-R-L-E-Y, underscore Matt, M-A-T-T. Or you can follow me at Big Gay Mexican. Or me at The Street Sage. Thanks for listening, folks. Bye. Chat show. show instead of a talk show.